So, um, yesterday was a bad day. Mm. I had a panic attack at work. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to say that. Feels, feels kind of, I don't, feels weak. I don't, I almost, I almost wish it had been a heart attack. Not really. But in order, because I, I feel like I could say that with greater um, comfort. It, it, it took me a while to, to, to kind of be able to say that I had a, heart, a panic attack. Now, this isn't the first time that this has happened, I think. There was a, a time back in mid-COVID when I had several incidents like this, but they were, they were different. This was this one I thought was a heart attack yesterday. So I'll explain what happened, um, and then um, I'll, I'll explain what happened. You know, a couple of years ago when I had something similar happened, and what I plan to do from here. So, w- without needing to give any uh, particulars, I was in a very stressful meeting at work. Um, it's been a couple of tough weeks. It's, this week, last week was, was, was tough. We had some challenges, unexpected challenges on one of my projects. And it was a stressful meeting um, and unexpectedly stressful. I didn't see that coming at all. Um, and if I had to put it on a level of stress, you know, if there was a zero to 10 scale, I would have given that meeting of maybe a six. I've had much worse. While I was in the meeting, um, I was a you know an online meeting in Microsoft Teams. I began to feel a pressure on my chest, um, like a weight, as they say, and constriction around my heart. Uh, pain, kind of. Um, and then I began to feel um, uh, numbness in my hands and tingling in my hands. And that persisted, and the, 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 the tension in the meeting persisted, and just and it actually got worse. Um, and this feeling to intensify, the pressure increased, the pain, the, 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 the sense of, um, uh, uh, you know, it was, at that point it was kind of a foggy feeling, um, I guess that's a good way to describe it, kind of like just like a, a foggy haze over my head. And, I, and finally I got to the point after about, it must have been about five to seven minutes, maybe as long as 10 minutes of just increasingly getting worse. And remember, I'm in this little room and Yumiko was in her room. In the, uh, after I started to feel like I was going to, I might pass out. And I didn't want that to happen. No, well, I got to give you a little bit of information. Um, my father died of a heart attack, um, and he was uh, four years younger than me when that happened. And he, um, he didn't come out of it. And I was think, sitting here in my chair in the meeting, this difficult meeting, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to pass out right in front of my co- coworkers but they're going to have no way to reach my wife. They're, you know, <laughs> so I said, I, just, I raised my hand. I said, everybody, I need to leave. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a problem here. I'm going to bug out of the meeting. And I clicked the end of the meeting and I got up and I went into the other room with Yumiko and I said, Yumiko, I think I might be having a heart attack. And the main thing was I wanted to be in the same room with her in case I did collapse. So she would know. So I laid down on the, uh, on this on the sofa and it didn't get it didn't get better and within a couple more minutes it was I really felt like I was going to pass out and the all of the things were more, more intense and especially the sense of weight in fact I can feel it a little bit right now as I remember it like breathing when I breathe in there would be like this pain right where my heart is and I thought damn it I'm having a heart attack and I thought I don't want to go, I don't want to die just because I, 
I am embarrassed to go to the hospital. So I said, Yumiko, I think I better better go. And she, she was all for that. And um, we found, uh, I didn't know that you could, if you have a heart, if you have an emergency, you can just go to any emergency room. I didn't know that. So I, I chose the clinic just down the street, the Kaiser Clinic just down the street. We went there. They were great. <coughs> they took care of me, put me on the EKG. Um, they had a real tough time getting the re- getting a reading because I was shaking so much. I literally, my whole body, my body was trembling. Um, they finally got the EKG reading, and the doctor came in later and read it, and said that there, uh, the, she did not think I had a heart attack, but instead that I had a panic attack, which I did not really understand at that point. I didn't know what a panic attack is. I thought a panic, I thought a panic attack was when you just lose it because you can't. Because life is too hard, and you're just, and you're just, you've had enough, and really, you need to change something. And maybe that's what it is. In fact, I don't know. It, it kind of felt like panicking, right? Like not being in control. So, I was discharged, you know, of course, and I came home. I took the rest of the day off. I sent messages to the people that had been in that meeting to let them know that I'm all right. And then I took the rest of the day off, and you know. I walked with the dogs and took it easy, so to speak. And then that's what happened. Now, I'll add just a few more things. It was it was coincidental, perhaps. In the morning, um, as I was getting ready for work, and maybe I set myself up for this, I don't know. I was I was combing my hair, getting ready to come in to, to, to sit down to start my day, and I was combing the hair... And I did this, and I looked over, I saw my hand, and my hand was really weird. It was, something was wrong with it. It was like like swollen and discolored. It just seemed something was wrong. Um, I thought I even saw wrinkles on it. It was, it was strange. I remember thinking, and I've never done this in my life. I'm looking at my hand and saying, oh no. Because I remember that just before my dad died of his heart attack, his feet had been discolored and swollen. And I remember seeing that. I didn't know what it was. His ankles were all swollen. And later I learned that that was a, you know, a warning sign. And I looked at that, and I literally, yesterday morning before more, the work started, I said, oh, no. And I, and I said to myself, maybe today's the day. And then all of that occurred. And I so that was another one of the catalyst things that caused me to decide to, to go to, to, go to the, um, see the doctor all of a sudden. It wasn't an emergency room. It was just an emergency, a crash at the clinic. So... So why do I say this isn't the first time? But it, it was different. It was different. Um, for a couple of years during COVID, um, I was working uh, at another place. And um, it was really hard. Uh, I won't, again, there's no need for any details. But I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would have what I called then a panic attack. And I think it, I think it was, but it was definitely different in a way, but maybe it wasn't. I would lay there in bed. I couldn't sleep. This is kind of the start of when I couldn't begin to sleep and then the problems that I have, which are much better now, but still. Um, and I would lay there and I would just lay there awake thinking about the problems at work, the problems I was going to have to face the, when I got up in the morning. And it would just build and build and build until finally I would be hyperventilating. And um, I don't remember pain in my chest. I don't remember that weight, that feeling like a heart attack, but I do remember. I remember hyperventilating, um, being very emotional and distraught, um, and that happened maybe four or five times over the course of about a one or two month period, one and a half month period, perhaps a really intense period. That was when I decided that I was going to leave that place and and, and go, go go change jobs, um, and I did. But it took me another took me another year before I did because I, I, I stayed and finished the projects I was on before I left that place. Anyway, the, I guessing that I thought that was pan, that's what panic attacks were about. I thought panic attacks would be, you know, would have a precursor of, or, or, or a trigger, so to speak, of, of some sort of an intense emotional feeling, panic, worry and panic, etc., right, that leads up to it. And then it would be like, ah, because that's what it was before. This was different. I wasn't necessarily upset. I was not pleased with the way the meeting was going, 
but I wasn't nothing like I was in the past. And yet this thing just came out of nowhere. So afterwards, it didn't come out of nowhere. It came definitely out of the circumstance. So afterwards, um, I talked around to some of my friends and I learned that I'm not alone, that others um, have experienced the same thing frequently. I have friends that have gone to the emergency room. Uh, I learned because I talked to them. So, you know, as much as, you know, three times go to the emergency room because of this, because the thing is, you don't know. The symptoms are so similar to a heart attack. Uh, and the doctor even confirmed that, that it's hard to know and it's best to, it's best to have it checked out. I mean, it could, could in fact be a heart attack. And I, I think I'm in a vulnerable demographic, <laughs> especially with my family history. So I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed that all this happened. But now that I talk about it, now that I've talked about it, I don't feel so embarrassed. I guess I'm just human. <sighs> Yumiko and I afterwards, we took a, we had lunch together afterwards and then we, and we talked and then we walked the dogs in the evening. We had a good talk again. And um, we're going to look, we're going to look to try to expedite our re return to Japan. We have a plan. And we're still going to execute that plan. That plan involves making sure that our daughter finish we we don't want to leave here until she's finished with school and settled into a life of her own you know she's it's going to be rough for her to start so but we have a new plan to to, to maybe facilitate that while also facilitating the 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 transition because we we both have very stressful jobs and we need to get out of these jobs you know they're going to kill us or if not kill us outright, definitely degrade the quality of our health to the point that uh, we'll be, uh, we have years shaved off of our lives and be weakened and made more vulnerable to disease and death. It's just not a good way to live. I feel lucky that I have a chance to, uh, well, I mean, just about anybody could, right? I mean, it's all a matter of, of, how much you want you expect out of life and I expect very little I, I just I just want the the peace the peace of a simple humble life 